Okay, so 3.2.6 is going to give us this 3D vector space, uh, and it's going to be spanned by this arbitrary orthonormal basis, ket1, ket2, and ket3, and then we're given two uh, ket vectors, alpha and beta, and we're told that, okay, well, alpha can be defined in terms of this basis this way, and beta can be defined in terms of the same basis that way. Uh, part A, construct bra alpha and bra ket in terms of the dual basis, bra 1, bra 2, bra 3. So uh, if, right, we already know what dual basis is from earlier in the chapter. We were told that dual space is essentially just uh, the uh, sort of bra version of a ket. So if we want to construct these vectors in dual space, we basically need to turn these from ket alpha and ket beta into bra alpha. Sorry. Bra alpha and bra beta. And we already know how to do this, right? So we know that in a standard inner product, right, if we switch between bras and cats, we can do that by taking the conjugate, right? We know that, uh, you know, given uh, an inner product between two arbitrary things, x and y, we can switch the order of these by taking the complex conjugate like this, right? So in terms of matrices, the equivalent for this would be to just take the conjugate transpose, which turns your column matrix into a row matrix, right? So you basically, you take all of the elements of alpha and beta, put them into a row matrix instead of a column matrix and take the complex conjugate of each individual element. So if alpha or if ket alpha is defined using the following column matrix of i, negative two and negative i like this, right? because my elements are i, negative 2, and negative i up here, then in that case, uh, bra alpha is going to equal the conjugate transpose of this, where I just take all of the elements, shove them into a row instead of a column, and take all of their complex conjugates, which is going to give me negative i, negative 2, and positive i, just like that. And next off, uh, same thing for ket beta, right? If ket beta can be described using a column vector, uh, this is going to be i, 0, and 2, based on the fact that it's i times 1. There's no two basis vector, or there's, two, there's no two orthonormal basis in the middle, and then a 2 times vector 3, right? And this, I'm going to say, okay, well, the bra equivalent of this is the conjugate transpose, which I'm going to take all of the elements, put them in a row, and then take the complex conjugate, which is going to be negative i, 0, 2. And just like that, we're done with part A. So now let's do part B, which is to find the inner product of alpha and beta and beta alpha, and then confirm that these this property is true, which is that you can switch the order of an inner product around by adding a complex conjugate at the front. So that's also very easy, right? Let's do first off the inner product of alpha with beta, with alpha at the front and beta at the back. So this is going to be, so we already know that bra alpha is this, so negative i, negative 2, positive i, multiplied by ket beta, which is going to be i, 0, 2. And we know how matrix multiplication works, right? This is going to be negative i times i uh, plus negative 2 times 0 plus i times 2, which is going to give me uh, the two i's make a negative, so 1, and then the, this thing is just a 0, right? So this whole thing cancels, plus 2i like that, right? Similarly, if I want to take the inner product of beta and alpha, so reverse the order, beta and alpha like this, well, bra beta is equal to, as given up here, uh, negative i, 0, 2, and I'm multiplying this by ket alpha, which is going to be i, negative 2, negative i, as defined up here, right? In that case, I'm going to get negative i times i, the front, plus 0 times negative 2, uh, plus 2 times negative i, right? And this is going to give me, well, i times i is negative 1, so positive 1 minus 2i. So we have 1 plus 2i, 1 minus 2i. These are indeed complex conjugates of each other, therefore inner product alpha with beta is indeed equal to inner product of beta with alpha taken with a complex conjugate at the top. 
Okay, finally, part C, find all nine matrix elements of the operator. Uh, and then in this basis, construct the matrix A. And then finally, we want to ask, is it Hermitian? And the operator A is defined as the projection operator, but with alpha and beta instead of a single element. So let's write this down. C, A hat is equal to ket alpha bra beta. Ket alpha bra beta, like this. Oops, I wrote the order wrong. Bra beta. And we want to find matrix A. So matrix A is going to be a three by three matrix because this is a three dimensional system. Let's say A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, right? And at this point, we already know sort of how to find the individual elements, right? Because we know that the individual elements of matrix A could be found via sort of A, N, M is equal to the inner product of E, N with A hat in the middle and then em like that so let's just do a few just as an example so let's suppose i want right uh like a11 this is going to be inner product between basis one sandwich with a sandwich with basis one right or just one alpha or a hat and then one like that so if a is equal to alpha beta like this then this is going to be equal to one and then alpha, beta, one, like that. So inner product of beta with one. Let me just copy down what alpha and beta equal. So let's write this in red. I know that alpha is equal to I one minus two, two minus I three. And I know that beta is equal to I one plus two, three, like that. So if I take an inner product of beta with one, well, ket beta, or bra beta, I suppose, is going to equal the conjugate transpose, which is gonna be, you know, negative one, uh, bra one plus two bra three, Right, and I keep on messing up my bras and cats, I apologize. Bra three like that, because we saw up here that beta is like this, right? Negative one, bra one, plus zero, bra two, plus two, bra three, like that. So in that case, this is gonna give me bra one, and then ket alpha, and then the inner product of beta with one. So if I take a one into each of these, well, the latter term goes to zero. This is just going to give me negative i, like that, right? And finally, what that leaves me with is just negative i at the front and an inner product of one with alpha, in which case, well, alpha equals this. So the only thing that comes out is going to be the one. Both of these terms go to zero because it's inner product of one and two and one and three. These are orthonormal basises, which leaves me with another i. So it's going to be equal to negative i times i, which is going to just give me positive one because two negatives i. i times i makes a negative one that cancels with the positive or the other negative at the front to make a positive one. Therefore, the first element is going to be one. Right, and we've done this multiple times with a bunch of other stuff. So I'll do like one more, I guess. And then I'm just going to give the answer for the actual matrix for A because it's kind of just sort of the same rote problem over and over. So let's do, you know, a uh, row one, column two. So a one, two is going to equal one and then a sandwich in the middle and then two like this, right? And this is going to give me one and then same thing, alpha, right? Uh, ket alpha and then bra beta but this time inner product with two at this end. Same thing, right? Beta is negative one i plus two times three. There is no two bra orthonormal basis vector in here. So because of that, this term automatically goes to zero. And if this term goes to zero, then this is gonna multiply over to this side and also gonna give you zero. So this whole thing is gonna equal zero. Therefore, this middle element B is gonna equal zero. 
And this actually tells you something because, right, this whole thing, right, everything here is sort of in the second column. So, you know, I'm going to, this is a 2-2, two, two. this is a 3-2, right? And for all of these, you're always going to have this 2 uh, at the end of this inner product thing, right? So you're always going to have an inner product of beta with 2 for these middle terms. So automatically, I can also deduce that these middle terms are also just going to equal 0 no matter what, right? So that, I've, or that solves 4 of the 9, uh, let's do just because of how quick this one is, let's just do C as well. Um, so A13, this is going to equal inner product of 1, A hat, 3, right? Then 1 at the front, and then the same inner product as before, alpha cat, and then inner product of beta with 3. And the inner product of beta with 3, well, that's just going to be 2 because the 3 cancels with this to make a 1. The three inner product of 1 with 3 is going to give me 0. So that just gives me a 2 right here. Uh, so this term is going to be 2. Inner product of 1 with alpha, well, that's just i again. So that's going to give me i over here. So I'm left with 2i. Therefore, this third element is going to equal 2i. And you know what? This is going fast enough. Let's just do the whole thing. Uh, uh, so this is going to be row 2, column 1. So A21. This is going to be 2 at the front this time. And then same thing, alpha, beta, inner product with 1, like this. So going up again, beta, right? Inner product with 1. Uh, if it's bra beta, then I'm looking at a negative i at the front. So this term is going to turn into a negative i. Finally, inner product of 2 with alpha. Well, this is my 2 term, which has a negative 2 at the front. So I'm going to get another negative 2 out from here. These are going to multiply. I'm going to get positive 2i. So row 2, column 1, aka element d, is going to be positive 2i. Now let's do F. So this is going to be row 2, column 3, A2, 3. This is going to be the same thing. Uh, 2, and then cat to alpha, inner product to beta with 3 this time. So beta with 3 is going to give me 2, right? So this is going to give me 2. 2 with alpha, well, inner product of 2 and alpha... That's this term, so that's a negative 2. These two multiply, this is going to give me negative 4. Excuse me, I'm going to drink some water. Okay. Uh, G, this is going to be row 3, column 1, so A3, 1. This is going to be 3 at the front, same thing, alpha, beta with 1. Okay, so beta with 1, it's this term, that's a negative i. 3 with alpha, that's this term, that's another negative i. These two terms multiply, two negatives make a positive, I and I make another negative, that's negative 1. So this term is going to be negative 1. And then finally, A3, 3. Three, alpha, beta with 3. Okay. Back again, beta with 3, that's going to be a positive 2. 3 with alpha, that's going to be a negative i, right? These two multiply, make negative 2i. So this final matrix element is going to be negative 2i. And with that, we're done.